Hi, Jack Willard here. In our relatively short video, we talk about Elvis struggles, the Bob Joyce connection. Is there a Bob Joyce connection? In the documentary, Elvis, The Other Side, some would call it propaganda, others would view it as truth, some would say it's a mix. They examine the pain and suffering of Elvis Presley. They have a lot of help from the Memphis Mafia. They detail the many struggles of Elvis. In a separate video, Charlie Hodge speaks to an audience from a stage. He speaks of Elvis taking meds for high blood pressure, hypertension, who doesn't these days, it seems, for glaucoma, perhaps drops, pills and drops, if he didn't take that medication, he could go blind. A bad liver like his mom had, and a twisted, spastic colon. They speak of Elvis taking more and more pain medications. Jerry Schilling said, quote, the drugs were affecting him and not just physically, end quote. Elvis would be given to dark moods, sometimes lasting a half hour or more, and then he would just snap out of it. The other side also talks about cocaine being used on occasion and various uppers to accommodate a lifestyle where you stay up till daybreak, six o'clock in the morning, and sleep all day. It was often said that Elvis got up around four o'clock in the afternoon. He expected the Memphis Mafia to sleep when he slept. Consequently, they didn't have a lot of time with their family. Um, there was an occasion where he was working on a set and one of them snuck to the other set that wasn't being used to take a nap, and Elvis found him there and yelled at him. Larry Geller. He was hired as a hairdresser, the hairdresser, for Elvis Presley. And he morphed into becoming a spiritual advisor. He spoke very well, I have to say, in the documentary. Elvis, the other side, quote, I wanted Elvis to wake up and do what was meant for his life. Elvis realized he was taking poison. He pondered going to Hawaii to take a year off then resurface as a dramatic actor. That was a dream that Elvis held on into the 70s. He didn't think much of his films that Colonel Parker pushed him into doing. There were a few times, a few films, where he did get to do some dramatic acting, and people said he was pretty good. He wanted to do more of that. But once Colonel Parker got the Las Vegas deal going, well, the Colonel just loved the casino. How convenient, right? How convenient. And Elvis would eventually scream at him uh, that you're working me like a mule, like a mule. Um, now, in terms of Larry Geller being a spiritual advisor, well, we know that Elvis recorded gospel albums early on in his career, often doing the traditional hymns. And you wouldn't think he would then be open to what Larry was pushing, which was perhaps a mix of Hinduism, Buddhism, expanded consciousness. I have spoke of my own story where before I 
believe by the grace of God, I came to Jesus Christ and was born again in 1984. Just prior to that, I joined my friends in a uh, romp through Hinduism. They would stick with it, by the way. They would stick with it. Um, And uh, I was, uh, first I read a book called The uh, Handbook to Higher Consciousness, and then started to read the works of Ram Das, formerly Richard Albert, and uh, books like Be Here Now. I was fascinated. I went to ashrams with my friends and sat at the feet of a guru dressed in orange. And that lasted for a while until February of 1984 when I was led to receive Christ as my personal savior. Now, after that happened, I had no interest in Hinduism. I realized that I had to turn to the Bible for my answers, not the Bhagavad Gita or anything like that. So that quest ends when you come to Christ, which uh, makes you think about something that I've alluded to before. We don't really know when Elvis became a born-again Christian, when he actually gave his heart to Christ. Many people sing gospel albums. I think you could find some uh, religious uh, Jesus songs from Barbara Streisand, Christmas songs, if you look hard enough, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it's very curious that Elvis seems to have been open to what Larry Geller had to say into the uh, mid-70s and beyond, and beyond. But when you come to Christ, you start to realize the two simply don't mix. And you stay away. You stay away. Elvis had a lifelong desire, let's say since he was a little kid on up, to find out why he was picked to be Elvis Presley. What was he doing on this earth? What was his mission? And he explored many different faiths, many different belief systems. And he did that for many, many uh, years. Of course, Colonel Parker didn't want him to become a dramatic actor, as I said. The most important thing, and Tom Hanks said that in the movie as him, he said, look, the most important thing is that Elvis be on that stage tonight, be on that stage. And in uh, uh, past the mid-70s, when Elvis was clearly, like early 1977, not doing well, not feeling well. He was bloated and having a difficult time. He worked out a deal, I believe, with NBC to do a TV special, which would be filming Elvis in concert. He was sweating profusely. He was not able to uh, to enunciate and talk much. He couldn't get through Are You Lonesome Tonight? Um, but yet he was still able... at at some point, to sit down in front of a piano. Someone held a mic in front of him and do an incredible version of Unchained Melody. The voice never left him, but he was in trouble. You could see it. The fans knew it. Uh, He was in very serious trouble, and the Memphis Mafia knew it. And uh, they tried to um, find an easy, gentle way to let him know that he, uh, that he needed to, to get some treatment, to get some real treatment. Um, as uh, Charlie Hodge said, Charlie Hodge said on the stage, he said, people said we should have said something, we should have said something, we should have done more. Well, you only get to tell your boss once once that he's wrong, one time. I only get to tell him once because Elvis wouldn't uh, want to be badgered by the people that he may have loved them and they were like family, but he could uh, turn on them as well. On a number of occasions, he fired them all, all at once, and then rehired them all at once. 
the uh, Memphis Mafia chief of uh, security, Lamar Fike, uh, and all the Memphis Mafia speak sincerely of the death of Elvis Presley in August of 1977, as does Larry Geller. Other people, too. And this is something, as we have done the Bob Joyce topic for the last five years, I've always kept in mind, I've always made it clear we speak of possibilities, that I could be wrong about the whole thing. It doesn't seem to me like they're lying. In the Verdict 1, our most successful video over, what, 92,000 uh, hits now? Um, I say that personally I feel that he is, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I have another video where I speak about him being the son of Elvis, which uh, has a few thousand hits, but uh, it's much less popular with my audience. It's much less popular. What I propose there is that when Elvis was 18 years old, possibly, um, he had a uh, love child with some woman. And uh, then five years later, he's in Germany. The colonel made sure he got him into the army. Good for the image. Good for the image. You know, that's what he cared about. Oh, they think you're this hippie uh, freak who does these suggestive moves. Well, we're going to show them that you're all Americana. The colonel could be lethal, right? And uh, also kept him out of international touring because the colonel didn't have a passport. Didn't have a passport. So five years later, he's in Germany, and yes, he uh, um, has been introduced to Priscilla at this time, but she's not there all the time, and he needs company, and he hooks up with this uh, very attractive young lady that many of us think, many of you think, and many, many people have said that that is Walena Hattie, and... Um, if that was true, if Elvis had a love child, a, a son, he would probably tell her, I have a, a five-year-old son at home. And uh, maybe down the road at some point, uh, the son of Elvis Presley, and many don't want to hear this, uh, got talking to uh, Walena who was married to a Robert Wayne Joyce. They married in 1975. Uh, this is a, on the record in Texas and then moved to Little Rock, Arkansas at some point. Maybe uh, he began to tell her at some point that he felt it in his heart to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she says, well, let me help you. Let me help you. My goodness, you look so much like your dad. It's incredible. Let me help you. And how that works and what have you and who uh, Bob Joyce is married to. He says he's married to Alina. So that's all part of the story that makes this the most amazing entertainment story, in my opinion, of all times. A phenomenon that uh, is ignored by the mainstream media Someday it'll be a movie is my prediction. I don't know if I'll be around to, uh, to see it. But that, you know, the number one thing people say to me is he just doesn't look 88. Um, and they say Robert Wayne Joyce would be 70 going on 71. Is he 71 yet? I know uh, Elvis Presley, if he's still with us, will turn 89 in January of 2024, which is just around the corner now. And uh, so they say, now, there are people that go to Household of Faith, and they tell me in person he looks older. Uh, one person told me she's a caregiver for the elderly, and she hugged the pastor, and his uh, frame felt like that of an 88-year-old man. That's what her words were. 
we've had people say that uh, they saw both Robert Wayne Joyce for a short time, who looked like the younger brother of the pastor, Pastor Bob Joyce. So there's so many things, and people visit from all over the country. Now, in, the, in this video, what I'm not going to do is talk about the sex life of Elvis Presley. Uh, there are people, and many of them are women, that uh, don't want to hear that. They want to believe that um, Elvis was different than most men. Guys understand that Elvis was a human being. They understand the urges of a man. They understand, I think it was put rather crassly uh, by uh, some author who the name isn't coming to me right now. I've almost got it. Uh, um, the might have been uh, William F. Buckley, might have been someone else. That man liked to spread it around a bit. But um, they want to believe that Elvis, you know, only make good decisions. And I don't know any human being that only makes good decisions, especially when you're loved by women all over the world. The temptation has to be humongous. But I'm not interested in talking anymore about who uh, Elvis was married. We have two videos on that. I don't know how long they'll be up because it did uh, lead to some animosity and angry comments. It's one thing to note what you feel are facts, um, hopefully doing it in a respectful manner. It's another thing to just, uh, you know, go off the rails. And we don't want to be a channel that does that kind of thing. This is a safe place where people who love to talk about Elvis and definitely love to talk about Bob Joyce, uh, whether it be in the live shows on Saturday night that we often do or in the comment section of the pre-recorded videos, it's a safe place if you are just coming on to, uh, to uh, make fun of people or to, uh, you know, just spew negativity all the time. You know, those comments don't stay up because they're, they're not in community guidelines that are set by YouTube, for example. And um, it's, just, um, it's just not what we do here. It's just not we do what we do here. Um, this channel in 2023, as I'm speaking to you in December, middle of December 2023, is the most successful it's ever been, especially November, December 2023. I don't know how long that'll last because I'm not going to do uh, videos uh, on Pastor Bob Joyce uh, when there's nothing to talk about. And we talk about a, a plethora of other things. And I so appreciate when people watch the other things. And we talk about a, a number of things in the live shows. And people say they like that, you know. So there's plenty of opportunity here and many subjects that we cover because we live in very dangerous times. And you can't just talk about one topic and ignore that. At least I, I feel I can't, even if only a certain amount of subscribers uh, like it. I ask you that you do subscribe. I ask you that you do like the video if you like it, share it, whatever you can do. We appreciate it. Um, we, uh, we have uh, seen more growth, over 4,500 subscribers now as I talk to you, uh, and uh, growing, and I thank you very much for that. My personal email is jackthefairguy, Jack the F-A-I-R guy, at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Comment here. Please be respectful, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, perhaps in a live Saturday night show or another time. It's always nice to be uh, coming into your home or wherever you watch these from whatever part of the world you're in. It's a real privilege.